Shannon, have you been paying attention to this Kyrie Urban stuff? To a degree, yes. Yes, I have. So you know about the Hebrews to Negroes documentary? Yes. And I knew tweet. about it. I have not watched it. Neither have I. Uh, okay. It's too long for me to, to watch. Uh, I'm not going to watch it. You know... Do you remember, Shannon, a couple of shows ago, I asked you, were black men like the weakest link? Like, you know, the, the weakest amongst the other, you know, groups of men. Or or I asked you, were black men weaker than our forefathers? Wait, do I remember the conversation? Yes, yes. I do. I do. I do. Yes. yes. I know. And, you know, you gave a pretty good pushback to it. And I have said, Shannon, these dudes are nothing. In comparison <laughs> to their fathers and their grandfathers. Mm -hmm. This Kyrie situation. Is, is so disappointing. On on what side? Explain it. To on me. the black male side. Okay. You have this dude. He tweets a picture. Of a documentary, of, of, of a documentary that is hosted on Amazon. And now he finds himself suspended without pay. And they released this list of five things he has to do in order to play again. And you ain't hear really nobody really of stature saying this is a bullshit, which it is. Um, I'm not a... Yeah, I, I, I'm not a big fan of the list of things he has to do, Um, but that's only because uh, I feel like this list, this list and these actions that he has to take in order to gain, you know, uh, forgiveness from the Jewish community, I feel like, I feel like I don't see these lists of demands being given to anyone else who has offended any other type of community. Like people that have been racist have said racist things about black people or like really any other race. I like I don't I just feel like I haven't seen the same um the same reaction. Really. The reason why you haven't seen the same reaction is because it hasn't happened before. Well, I know. And this is what I'm talking about. There's been more smoke for Kyrie than there has been to Amazon, who hosts who's who who's hosting. Right, the documentary. Right, right. Mm -hmm. That is strange to me. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and by the way, up. I'm a free speech absolutist. So I believe the documentary should stay up there. The same way I don't believe Kyrie Irving should, see, should be suspended. But I don't understand how you can rationalize the first one, Kyrie being suspended, while not having any type of smoke for the platform hosting the documentary, if you believe it to be super mm -hmm. dangerous. Mm-hmm. It's not adding up for me. Mm -hmm. And the silence amongst black men in media, black men who are also athletes, is a is the is the constant reminder of how weak we are. Mm -hmm. Like just total. <laughs> At some point, you know, I've been tweeting and, and quote tweeting, choose your master whenever like somebody gets in trouble for these things. Right. Because mm. I believe that everybody has a master, you know, <laughs> is your master God, is your master money, is your master, you know, power, Wh whatever your master is, we all have a master. And what you are watching are dudes that have chosen the master and their master is money. Mm -hmm. does there not come a point where you've made enough money mm -hmm. and like when do we begin to focus on the fact that we don't have any power we don't have any industries we don't have any like I keep telling y'all black people are headed to being a permanent underclass in this country between the, the Kyrie stuff 
between the LA City Council stuff a couple of weeks ago. We don't have anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're consumers. Congratulations. You buy a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. What do you produce? Are you at the top of any of these major industries? No, you're not. Who cares about black people being the most influential when you don't own the culture that is so influential? Mm -hmm. It is owned by people who are non-black. It is. The black media. From the Charlemagne the Gods to the Hot 97s to the Roland Martins, who you know I despise, to the uh um uh, um you know Urban View channel and Sirius XM to like all of these people, mm -hmm. they have no power. None. Mm -hmm. Because they have made the decision, many of them, to align themselves with the power structure. Non-black people, again. And I'm not someone that, you know, is against black people working against non-black people. But the relationship can't be predatory. It has to be one that is equal. Mm -hmm. One where you have some power, some say so, some balls. And so Kyrie's out here, you know, getting shitted on for tweeting a link to a documentary. And I'm like, the NBA goes out of its way to appease China. I thought it was because of the interview that he gave. Who did he interview with? Um, I thought Who? It was of... He did an interview with somebody. I forgot. His... Hold on. Let me. You can see. What... I'll look up this. I'll look up. I'll look okay. up. The... Yeah. From what I remember, Kyrie Irving never did a specific interview with any individual. He only had post. He only had pregame. Oh yeah, that's what. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he said nothing in those interviews except mm -hmm. for they would, you know, they would ask him to say or you know, ask him, you know, if he had any anti-Semitic beliefs, and he would say, you know, that he respects all people in all cultures, and they wanted him to say something specifically, and to to denounce anti-Semitism specifically, and he wouldn't do it, which was the right call. Because this is not about anti-Semitism. This is not about if he's anti-Semitic. This ain't even about the documentary. Because once again, if the NBA has such a problem with it, why not go to Amazon, who you are trying to do business with, and say, hey, take it down. Mm -hmm. This is about getting him to bend the knee. To kiss the ring, as they say. And when you get into these discussions about religion, I keep telling people, these ain't clean discussions. People have been arguing, killing, dying over religion for thousands of years. I can't question who the real Jews are. <clears throat> <laughs> I, I, I'm, I can't I mean I guess you can <laughs> this is America it is mm -hmm. I mean I guess you can do it I mean I don't know I feel like I feel like um, freedom of speech is a thing but I feel like well this people... is not just freedom of speech this is also mm -hmm. freedom of religion mm -hmm. but I feel like uh I feel like people still have the right to to take consequences against you if they don't agree with what you're saying. Which is, this is um, not free speech, though. Ah, uh, I mean, if I if, if if you're remember, you can't just look at this through the lens of the rich athlete or the rich rapper. You always have to think about this. At least I do, from the average American. If you're saying if I say X, Y, and Z, I won't face prison time, but I will lose all opportunities to earn an income 
so I'll be homeless. You don't have freedom of speech. Mm-hmm. You don't. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't end up homeless because you believe that you are the real Jews. Mm-hmm. Now, I know nothing about the history. Mm-hmm. To be perfectly honest, as it pertains to my individual life, it means nothing. Mm-hmm. That said, when you kind of dig in, see, and, and here's the thing, there are real world consequences to these things. Mm-hmm. We have U.S. policy as it pertains to Israel, the treatment of Palestinians, where at least half of the GOP supports Israel for no other reason than religious beliefs. Mm-hmm. Like, just think about that. Real political, social, ec- you know, economical stuff happens as it relates to Israel and the Middle East because of religious beliefs of one of the two major political U.S. parties in America. And so now you can't even say that, oh, you know, why would you even engage in these religious arguments? Well, because they have real-world consequences. Mm -hmm. They do. People don't want to be honest about these things, but they do. And so you should be allowed to discuss, to debate, to have these conversations. Mm-hmm. about oh who is jewish um you know can you be an ethnic jew these aren't even stuff that that is agreed upon by people who call themselves jewish and so this to me just kind of goes back to this thing where because blacks haven't done anything really to actually assure their own industries to actually you know put themselves in in, in a position where they have power and stature to a you know significant degree uh we're stuck in this underclass position and this was a point that malcolm brought up a while back too where where he was very critical of athletes and rappers and musicians about the fact that you know they were so concerned with trying to make it in white society that they weren't doing what malcolm said the koreans and the arabs and the jewish people were doing as far as uh, building communities, silos, and um, taking over industry. Hmm. <laughs> so essentially, the most powerful black person you could think of, whoever he or she is, is really a paper tiger. Mm-hmm. Because having all that money in the world ain't worth nothing if you aren't really in control of your thoughts, in control of what you can say and in control of what you can do. Mm. And that is a difference. And so watching all of these punks as it relates to the Kyrie Irving situation has been extremely enlightening. Not disappointing, enlightening. Because I think we should view these situations as, oh, okay, there's a lesson here for me to learn. Mm. And that has been my takeaway from, from the situation is, oh, okay, I have to make sure that I never mistake money for power money for respect because that's how you end up in deep waters mm-hmm. so yeah it, 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 it's been really disheartening but eye opening and <laughs> I hope man, the, the same thing I said with the LA City Council thing where I said I hope this is a an eye-opening situation for black people, I feel the same way now. Mm -hmm. I don't think it is, though, based on the conversations around the situation. Mm, But... No, I don't think so either. Yeah, it's like, you know, we ain't gonna learn until it's too late for us to learn. 